Hi everyone, this is Younes and I'm going to demo R20 Converter. So I'm going to convert my Roll20 campaign, Curse of Strahd, um, from Roll20 to Foundry VTT. So you can see it has all sorts of stuff, playlists, journals, uh, characters, everything. Um, first you go to github.com uh, to grab R20 Exporter. Can read the readme file to, to know how to get it installed. Once you have it installed, then you can just click on export campaign to zip, which will uh, automatically just download everything that's in this campaign and export it into a single zip file. Um, while it's doing this, I'm going to open Foundry VTT and just show you. Uh, I have Foundry VTT here, a fresh install without any worlds, and you can see it's completely empty, right? Um, now you go to my patreon.com uh, slash Kakaroto uh, website, download R20 Converter, and we extract it here. For convenience, I'm just going to move the Curse of Strahd zip file into the converter directory, right? Then we can open this uh, readme file, and you can read how to actually use it. All right. Um, so it's really simple. First, you click on this address bar right here and type CMD command. So CMD, press enter, and it opens this command console. Then you can type Windows slash R20 converter exe. And then you give it the um, path to the directory where you want to, um, to create the world. So I want to create it here. So I'm just going to come here and copy this, right? Right click to paste and add COS, which will be the name of the world. And then curse of strad.zip. And then we can add any arguments that we want. So you can get the list either by using dash dash help or you can see it directly in the readme file. So what I like to use is dash dash auto doors, which will automatically detect which walls are doors and replace them with doors instead of just walls. Uh, restrict movement, enable fog, and the new option which is add walls around map. Then we can execute it. Um, you can see it's already running. Uh, let's see here. It starts by creating the users, then all of my handouts. Uh, whoop. Where is it? There. Uh, then the characters, and then you can see it's creating my scenes. So if we pause it just for a second here, you can see it's creating uh, my scenes. It's detecting how many lines there are uh, of walls of each color. So for this one, 198 lines uh, of green, one line of red. So it's going to say uh, the red walls uh, are actually doors, not walls. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just going to take a few seconds. It will create all of the scenes and then it will uh, start converting the playlist as well. And then it's done. That's it. And you can see in the world's directory, I have my COS uh, uh, world that was just created. Uh, now we can reopen Foundry VTT and you can see Curse of Strahd there imported from uh, Roll20 with Roll20 Converter and you can just launch the world. Um, that's it. It's just gonna work. There. Oh, I had some music playing. Um, let's just stop the music. There. And you can see the music is working. The playlists were all converted properly uh, with all the music in them. Um, all of the scenes, you can see the scenes here. These are the archive scenes. Uh, these are not. And we can go to a scene like this one, the Abbey, right? Uh, you can see it has all of the um, all of the tokens. It has the doors right where they should be. Uh, unless you know there are errors 
with uh, the uh, Roll20 map itself. As you can see here, they put lots of lines here for no good reason. Um, but yeah, the walls are there. Uh, we can try, you see, uh, it's working. Um, what else? We can go to the, uh, the Blue Water Inn. That's a nice map, right? You can see the uh, the walls, the doors, everything is set up properly. Um, you can go to the Werewolf Den, which is the map that actually broke for me Roll20, which is the reason why I left it uh, Roll20, because it just had so many walls that it was impossible to, uh, to make it work on Roll20. And, here it just loads in within a few seconds on Foundry VTT. All of the walls you can see are set up properly. You have some light sources here um, as well. Um, let's go look real quick at the uh, character sheets, right? So you have your uh, character sheets here, spell books, features, everything is the way that it should be. Features, spell book, the, the biography. Um, if we look at the named NPCs, uh, if we look at Esmeralda, for example, um, you can click on the handouts. So the cross-linking of handouts works. Uh, you have your GM notes. Uh, you have your spell book features. Everything is right there, and it works. For player characters, it's slightly different. So you have your feats. Right, position of privilege, divine sense, breath weapon, the spell book, um, you have the inventory as well, you have the resources, divine sense, lay on hands, the head dice, all the values are exactly the way they were on roll 20. Um, same thing for pretty much all of the uh, uh, all of the characters or NPCs. It's just working. Um, you have your journal, I have my game summaries, I have uh, uh, my journals right here. I can click on um, the cross-linking of journal entries as well. So everything is right there, whether it's my maps, the walls, the tokens, the, uh, um, the tiles with the uh, GM layer or not um, everything is set up perfectly you can you can see um, here's the wolf uh, or this little guy it's all converted and uh, all it took is just this one command so thanks for watching and uh, if you are interested and you are not already a subscriber of Patreon, uh, you can just go to patreon.com slash Kakaroto and um, with the $5 experience player tier, you get access to the R20 converter uh, application and you can use it to convert any of your Roll20 campaigns into a Foundry VTT campaign. Uh, just like that. Thanks for watching.